Hey guys, welcome back. So today we want to talk about a rare version of the Steyr AUG. The AUG goes all the way back to the 1970s when it was first developed and adopted by several militaries around the world. And the gun has gone through a number of different evolutionary changes, something we're not going to delve into in this video. We're going to talk about one very specific version of the gun. The rifle that I have here in front of me is an A3 version. And so in the 70s and 80s, the guns were coming into the country. Then we hit the Clinton ban era, the 89 import ban, the Clinton ban era. And all of a sudden the Steyr AUG rifles were no longer being imported. We went through kind of a dry spell there. Fast forward a few more years, a company called Sabre Defense spins up and starts manufacturing licensed copies of the AUG rifles here in the United States. They get in trouble with the ATF. A gentleman by the name of Pete Athens steps in, acquires the assets. Then Steyr decides they want a USA presence and he sells the assets of uh, Sabre Defense to Steyr USA, who then resumes production of the guns here in the United States. I know it's a convoluted story, but we're coming to a point. In part of those negotiations, uh, Mr. Athens wanted a very specific model of the AUG that had only appeared at trade shows in 2006 and 2007, and only a handful of prototypes were known to exist. The gun never went into full production. And that's what this video is about today. So right now we're gonna start off shooting my, um, this is an AUG that is a very early Steyr USA version because it has two markings on it, it has Sabre Defense and Steyr USA. This is one of those guns that was manufactured after Steyr USA had purchased the assets of Sabre Defense. These receivers had already been manufactured under the Sabre Defense name, and they continued with those receivers because they were in inventory, and then when they ran out, they would just be marked um, Steyr USA. So this is a very early A3 version. I also happen to have it in what's called a NATO stock, and it uses standard Stenag magazines. And on top of it, I have an old school Spectre DR, it's Elcan, a Canadian company that manufactures optics for military use. The Steyr AUG, this one obviously is black. This one has a 16 inch barrel, has its folding vertical foreign grip. And all this will be important when we start talking about the CQC here in a moment. All right, let's do a little bit of shooting with this rifle and step over to the CQC and show you what that gun's all about. Great shooting rifles, guys. The AUG is easily one of my favorite bull pups. And again, this thing goes all the way back to the 1970s. Talk about a firearm that was way ahead of its time. We would like to thank our friends at Big Daddy Unlimited for helping to make this and other videos possible. If you'd like to help us out, swing by the BDU website and just for 99 cents, you can try out their service for one month. And they're basically like the Sam's Club of the online world. So check them out. If you would like to stay a member, go by militaryarms.org. There's a big link right at the top of the website and you can stay a member for 20% off every month going forward. So please check them out. This is the Steyr AUG A3 CQC. This was shown by Steyr at SHOT Show 2006 and 2007, and then it just kind of disappeared into obscurity. It never garnered much interest from military and law enforcement circles, and it was eclipsed by other models that Steyr would showcase roughly at the same time that actually got traction. So this prototype was shown off, it was never matured into a fully complete product, and it was shelved and forgotten about until we get to the story that I opened this video with and Mr. Athens' acquisition of Sabre Defense's assets, which he would then sell back to Steyr so they could resume manufacturing their bullpups here in the United States to get around importation laws. Mr. Athens negotiated the sale with one caveat. He wanted to retain the rights to the CQC design and he acquired the five known prototypes to exist 
and he could use those to reverse engineer, modify, and improve, and bring the CQC to market. That would have happened in 2012. So, before we get into what actually happened to it and the demise of the CQC, let's talk about what the CQC is and show you uh, how it comes apart and how it compares to the A3 that we opened up the video with. If you guys enjoy content like this, please be sure to like, subscribe, share this video, comment down below, and turn on notifications because all of that really does help us grow the channel. On top, we have a Steyr AUG A3 rifle. This rifle would evolve into the A3 M1 in 2014. But while the A3 was being manufactured, before it entered the M1 design stage, it has a rail that bolts to the top of the receiver that can be removed. It's flat on the receiver, and you would find different companies out there like Suarez International, I believe even uh, Manticore Arms and other companies offered replacement rails that would come further back, that would set up a little bit higher, all sorts of different variations. The key being that it was easily bolted to the top of the flat receiver. And this is the gun, the A3, that the CQC was designed around. So let's set this rifle aside for a moment and take a look at the CQC. Now you'll notice back here moving forward, nothing is changed on the CQC. Really the CQC's changes start with the top rail that's bolted to the receiver and then wind up coming out extending over the barrel, giving you these extra rail spaces on the side at the three o'clock, nine o'clock, 12 o'clock and six o'clock positions. Still has the same gas system. It's kind of recessed at the CQC's rail. And again, keep in mind, this is an 18 inch barrel and we'll show you how they accomplished that. But in actuality, it's a 16 inch barrel inside here, but the CQC required an 18 inch barrel. So let's take the gun apart and take a look at the rail system itself. Now, I don't think that, obviously I think when Steyr was showcasing this at SHOT Show in 2006 and 2007, again, it wasn't a complete thought. It wasn't fully developed yet. They were just trying to showcase something that gauge interest. And so when PJA went to work on making it a reality and making it something they could produce and make it marketable and, and functional, they had to make some changes. I don't know what those changes are, but I'm gonna point out some of the deficiencies that I see in this design, because in my opinion, even though this works just fine, it's still very much a prototype in, in my opinion. So I've cleared the weapon. I just let the bolt go home. The weapon is on safe. I'm going, I'm going to first remove the rail that's covering the barrel. To do that, you have to very gently push. If you push too hard, and this is why I say this is still really a prototype, you just barely push on this button. If you push too hard, you can easily break the mechanism. You're gonna push just enough to allow this little square thing to rotate 180 degrees. You can see the very dainty little springs in there. Once you've done that, now you can pull the rail system off the gun and it, it fits very snugly. Okay, I'm gonna pull it forward and there it kind of releases and it comes off the end of the barrel. Now what we're gonna, you're gonna notice is two things. First of all, there's a ring here that has set screws holding against the receiver. The rear of the rail is supported by that ring and you can see it right inside there. You can see the oil inside here where that ring sets. So that supports the rail in the rear on the barrel. And then you have this tab on the top of the new rail that goes with the CQC with this pin protruding and the locking cut, and that's gonna support it on the top half. So that's how that little tiny rail section is supported. Now, as I had mentioned, this has a 16 inch barrel. If you take a look at the, at the A3 above it, it has the same length barrel. What they did was put the spacers on here and manufactured a muzzle device that would extend it to 18 inches. Now there are some very few of these out there that PJA did, and this is my understanding, that have proper 18 inch barrels. In 2012, there was a big gun buying panic uh, because of what was going on during the Obama administration and 18 inch barrels weren't a priority for Steyr, so they were hard to come by. There are some out there that have the proper 18 inch barrel and those would be even rarer than the rifle that you see here. 
but you can see how they extended it to get it to 18 inches so that the muzzle would stick out of the hand guard just barely as it should. Now the other thing you'll notice is this still has the facilities for the folding grip. It's just been removed. And that's because with the CQC rail in place, you lose the functionality of this grip being able to fold. It's, it's just forever in the down position. And it kind of defeats the purpose of the CQC rail system. So this has been removed. It did come with the gun. I've removed it. The rail system fits on here. And then I have my own little flip down rail, I'm sorry, flip down uh, hand grip that places my hand away from the gas system. So I'll show you that when I shoot the gun. And so you'll see them both ways. You'll see them without this present and you'll see it with this present. What is actually correct, I don't know because I've never seen the actual factory prototypes. Other than that, the gun disassembles just like a standard AUG. I'm gonna go ahead and lock the bolt to the rear, hold that. Uh, it's not the best system in the world. I'm gonna go ahead and push the uh, bolt stop up. Ow, all right. Fight with me, please make this difficult. Okay, <laughs> now <laughs> you have the button here. Normally you'd have you know, the, the grip here. You can, if it's still in place, you just push the button and rotate the barrel and it'll just lift out. So it still retains the ability to quickly remove the barrel once you remove the CQC handguard. Putting it back, just set it inside there and push down, lock it in place. Now I'm not gonna get into, the bolts go home way too easy on these things. I'm not gonna get into uh, stripping the, uh, the AUG down. Plenty of videos out there, including videos we've done ourselves. So that is primarily the biggest difference. You'll notice the gas system's still the same. Everything's the same. You can see the modifications they made to the barrel to make it all work. And once again, it just in the state that it's in, I'm gonna say it's more or less still a prototype, but a, a kind of a shooting copy of what could have been. It's also worth noting that on the front of the CQC rail, you have a QD mount that can be used to quickly detach the sling, which is a nice touch. I leave it off because it just flops around when you fire it and mars the finish. And back here on the pin that holds the, the trigger group in and the butt plate on, you have a QD mount there as well. So you have the option of doing a QD sling on these when it's actually being quick. Right now it's not being so quick. All right, so to put it back together, all you have to do is carefully slide this rail back over the barrel. It fits very precisely. Right there you start to meet resistance. There's no play whatsoever in it. Even at that point, push it all the way back until it seats and it's flush there. I'm just gonna barely push on the tab, rotate this locking piece around. It's very, very thin metal, and that would be easily broken. But once it's locked in place, the handguard's there, it's fixed, and it's not going to move. It's important to note that the CQC system does not touch the barrel in any meaningful way. Yes, it has the collar back here, but it doesn't seem to have affected accuracy. You'll see reports out there that the CQC seriously degraded the accuracy of the, uh, the Steyr AUG rifle itself because it's touching that barrel where that collar is, but we've not seen that in our shooting of the gun comparing it to other AUGs out there using M193 ball. It gives the same accuracy performance. The whole reason why this gun finally didn't uh, make it why it went off the market in 2014 is because Steyr went to the A3 M1 receiver, which was no longer machined flat on top. It was machined with a little ramp in the front here, which then would no longer allow for the easy mounting of the CQC system. So when the A3 receivers went out of production, Steyr moved to the A3 M1 receivers in 2014. That spelled the end of the CQC's um, life cycle. That was it. And for whatever reason, they don't make them. There's plenty of A3s out there. 
but they just dried up and PGA stopped producing them. Again, we're right, out, right around 500 units produced from what I can gather online. There's not a whole lot of information on these rifles out there at all. This is stuff we've pieced together from uh, PGA's website itself and then a really detailed article that uh, was posted on AR15.com relatively recently, uh, back at the beginning of uh, 2020. So uh, a lot of good information that we, we gathered from those posts but what's true and what isn't, it's hard to say. Again, this was a prototype that never really fully matured into a product. Uh, PJA manufactured it for a short time, giving you know, Steyr AUG enthusiasts a, uh, a gun that's, the only thing more rare than this would be one of the original nine millimeter conversions from back in the 80s. Uh, I mean, it, it's just that rare. And so you'll see a lot of uh, AUG enthusiasts really wanting to acquire one of these guns. What's the value on them? Uh, based upon the article that I had read on AR15.com, people are talking around two and a half thousand, three thousand dollars current market value in 2020. But again, it's it's a collector's market. So if you were to buy one, find one for sale, you would probably have to pick it up off an auction site or something like that. So um, and it's going to go for auction prices. Very very interesting rifle to say the least. Two things to note with the PJA conversion. First of all, this is all aluminum, so as you shoot the gun, it heats up and gets uncomfortable. Therefore, it's nice to have that vertical grip. That vertical grip, again, is placed where it's away from the gas system, so if I even adjust my gas regulator to adverse settings, it's not gonna burn my finger or flame cut gloves I may be wearing, and I can still fold the vert grip away, which, again, the factory vert grip, if it's in place, is non-foldable. This allows me to still fold it away to shoot off a rest like this. So it adds some added weight out here. But I also say it's a prototype because it's just not durable. It's just not in a state where I would even recommend for law enforcement or even self-defense. And one of the reasons why is this locking system really needs further development. And it's not gonna happen at this point, I don't think. But this locking system, when I'm shooting it, uh, sometimes it'll start to unlock itself and slowly rotate itself up. That's because the spring pressure on it is so faint and it's so easily damaged. The instructions that come with it say, don't push too hard on this because you can break the locking system. So it's extremely delicate. And like I said, even when I'm shooting it just out here for fun, it'll start to walk loose, which would make the, the rail loose and eventually it would just walk off the end of the gun. So it's entirely too fragile to be taken seriously. It's more or less a collector's piece. Yeah, the added weight when you're shooting offhand uh, does make it a little bit more stable. And that 18 inch barrel, you know, adds to that weight and length. I wouldn't want to run it, C clamping it without some, something to mitigate that heat because it acts as a big heat sink. And after a few magazines, it gets hot really, really quick. And perhaps it's one of the reasons, many reasons why it was never really fully adopted by uh, any law enforcement or military agencies. And it's why it kind of died on the vine. It certainly seems that relics from the past like this come into the public consciousness every once in a while, typically because of video games. I'm not sure what prompted that um, thread on AR15.com, but it was posted around 4.15 of 2020, something like that. So it's a relatively recent thread that had so much information about the gun, which inspired me to make the video. So it's kind of weird how these things come and go from uh, the public consciousness. And then of course, when people start talking about them and people like me make videos about them, people run out and try to find them and buy them. But it's actually a really cool historical piece. Guys, if you would like for us to continue to be able to bring you videos like this, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. There's a link in the video description below. Give that link a click and consider becoming part of our Patreon family. Also right here on YouTube, there's a little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Click that join button and consider supporting us right here on YouTube because like so many other channels, we've been demonetized. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thanks for 12 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.